Hi everyone, this is Sarah Cornish from My Friends Photography. Today I'm going to be doing a two-part tutorial with you guys. It's super quick, super easy. First I'm going to run you through actions. Um, one of my biggest questions lately is how I combine them and obviously it does require some tweaking. So I'm going to show you how I do that fairly quickly and then I'm going to show you how to use my new textures. I released eye candy textures and they are hand painted and very just soft and subtle and I'm really excited about them so I would love for you to get an idea of how I would use them on my photos. So to begin, here's a photo of my daughter Lillian. She is a bit underexposed and it's fairly cold and blue because we were out in the snow. Um, this is straight out of the camera, totally unedited. And uh, I just want to say too really quick, we'll be using CS5 for this tutorial. I recently upgraded my camera to the Mark II and unfortunately I have to use that in order to open my, my RAW files. So I've had to kind of adapt and um, I've had it for quite a while but I've really always been partial to my CS3 for some reason. So you'll notice this is a bit different than the program I usually use for my tutorials. So Today I'm going to be using the Sunshine Collection. This is one of my favorite action sets. And it's funny, I didn't really use it much before for some reason, and I stumbled on it, and I'm like completely addicted. So this is like one of the new sets that I use over and over. So we're going to start with Funny Bone because it is a warmer action, and I have a cooler photo. A lot of people ask how I choose my actions when I'm, you know, deciding to edit. And a lot of times, I mean, I, I make them so I, I kind of know off the top of my head, but what I do is I try to you know balance so if I have a cool photo I'll try to use a warm action and vice versa you know it it helps with the white balance but it also kind of complements the photo very well so if you were to open this group you have a ton of adjustment layers I'm not even gonna play with those all I'm going to do is reduce the group opacity I don't like that number let's pull it down a little and we're gonna flatten make sure you flatten before you run another action otherwise it'll go all wonky because in order for an action to work really properly you want to make sure you're starting on a layer that's his background and you also want to make sure that it has the little lock and that it's flattened so and next I'm gonna run so silly this action has a lot of contrast and you'll notice that the side of her face is actually a little bright a little too bright for my taste I mean I like my my photos bright but that's a bit so you can actually mask off groups as well if you were to click this folder and you were to click the little box down here with the circle that's your mask and then you were to take a soft brush and mess with the opacity up here of your brush. Make sure it's on black and you were to paint over. See her face is coming down quite a bit. It's just taking some of the contrast off. And then from there, we're going to play with our textures. That's done. See how quick and easy that is? Now what I'm going to do is every time you run an action, it duplicates the photo. And um, I obviously don't need all these open, so I'm going to close these out. These are my textures that I chose to use. I have texture 29 and texture 7. And I chose these because they're very soft and I thought they would complement my snow photo as well, but they're also kind of on the warm side. This one's a little cooler than this one, but I'll show you how I blend them. So obviously I need to get this down onto my photo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it. And I'm going to drag this one as well. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to drag this texture right over our photo. I'm going to put this back in wait, hold on. Put this back in tabs because we're going to need that. We're going to minimize that. Alright, so you're going to notice that the texture is smaller than the photo because the photos are fairly large. That's totally okay. You just want to drag it so it covers the entire photo. And if you click this little triangle so it becomes like a arrow with two, you know, arrowheads at the end or whatever you would call it. And you click your paper clip, it'll keep it from distorting on you. So, Or you can hit shift and, and pull as well. And then you just want to click check. And I'm going to use multiply because it's a light photo. And you're going to notice already we have kind of like a purple thing going on here. And it's very pretty, but I don't love it on her skin. So I'm going to reduce the opacity. We're going to use a layer mask again. Get a brush and brush it right off the skin. And you'll notice right away her face is brightening up. It's very pretty. Now you can totally duplicate this and put it on soft light as well. And that'll add like a whole different effect. Kind of lightens things up a little bit. And that's all that I'm honestly going to do. Now we have this. We're going to use this texture. Same exact thing drag it down, 
put it on your photo. Make sure that you constrain your proportions so you don't get a funky distortion going on. And then we're going to use this one solely on soft light. And it's going to lighten things up, make it a little softer. We're going to mask it off and brush it off the skin again. And that's it. That easy. And now we have kind of a cool, pretty effect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Soft Pop from the Photographer's Toolbox. That's one of my favorites. Just cleans things up and finishes off a tiny bit and reduce the opacity. And pretty easy peasy. And, you know, you can always customize things to your liking, too, by using just regular adjustment layers. Uh-oh, I hear crying. Alright, well, I hope this is helpful. I have to go get my little girl, but you guys have a wonderful day, and um, be on the lookout for another tutorial soon. Alright, thank you. Goodbye.